Mark. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing well, Steve. Thanks. Thanks for being with us at Ascension at Prayer. And it's a new church year. Welcome to the it new church is. year. It is. Christmas is coming and the goose is getting fat. Okay. Um, talk to us a little bit about the first Sunday in Advent. Do people really eat goose for... You know, I don't know. They ought to. We should. Yeah. I don't think food line Let us know if you, yeah, if you know where to find goose. <laughs> so uh, Christmas is here, right? No, it's not here yet. It's Advent. It's Advent. Are you one of those sticklers, you know? I put my Christmas lights up the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, well, me too. So it's, it's you know, it's, Christmas is okay to celebrate. I mean, you don't want to be a stick in the mud. Right. But we do have this wonderful season, which you don't want to lose, which is Advent. Absolutely not. Yeah, and Advent is the looking forward to Christmas. Um, looking forward to uh, Christ, right? The Advent is the idea that he's coming. And uh, um, let's see, the gospel text for this Sunday would be uh, Mark chapter 11, uh, Christ is entering Jerusalem. Mm. Uh, he's coming in on a donkey. He's right. humble, right. right? Like we talked about last week. Um, uh, he's not the kind of king who wears, uh, you know, a, 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 f- a fancy golden diadem, right? He's going to wear the crown of thorns. And so the way in which he comes in to be king is to, to, to raise people up um, and really to put down people who are posers, who are actually evil and self-serving and only interested in themselves, uh, but pretend to be, um, you know, leaders in society. Yeah, and I think there's, there's definitely some parallelism between Palm Sunday and Advent that we see on Palm Sunday. Yeah. Um, when we come in with the palm branches and we've sung Prepare the Royal Highway, which technically in this hymnal is an advent hymn but hey, interesting yeah and so th- there's there's some very very uh there's a, there's a lot of similarities between well, the and two. last week's hymn you had the same thing it had a kind of a holy week uh advent lo he comes with clouds right descending yeah exactly yeah, cool. but today we're looking at lutheran service book 332 savior of the nations come this is one of my favorite advent hymns um, even though it has eight verses. <laughs> short verses. Yeah, they're short. Stanzas, and it, yeah. It, but it, it really, um, well, it, like we were it's talking short. just a minute ago, is, is there's uh, the, the message of homecoming a little mm. bit with, with um, the, the way that um, we are supposed to respond to the way that Christ comes. So on Palm Sunday, right, we, we wave our palm branches in the air, but... Um, in the first verse of this hymn, I think it, it wraps it up nicely. Uh, Marvel now, O heaven and earth, that the Lord chose such a birth. I, I think it's incredible that, that we um, have a king, we have a Lord, we have a savior who did not come in uh, on a chariot and a big old you know, procession and everything sure. like that. I mean, he was born in a manger, you know, which 21st century equivalent would be born in a, you know, a hog barn or a, yeah, sure. you know, a trough or something like that. Right, some kind of poor, weary stream. So, so this, is, this is awesome, I think, because I really feel this tension in society these days uh, and in being a professional, uh, but still having this sort of other God-given reality, which is home and family. And uh, you kind of yearn for a simpler life, right? There's a lot of this Wendell Berry kind of back, back to the earth stuff going on in our, in our culture. Hmm. And I, I really like that. I embrace that. I think that that's a, um, a necessary corrective uh, because where is our Savior and where is our salvation? Well, it's, it's, in a, it's in this humble place. It's sitting at home, right? Maybe in the cradle. It's, um, it, it's in these, these um, we might call them sort of mundane or take these relationships for granted, the relationships at home, the kind of God-given relationships. But it turns out those are more important than you know the the ways that you might lead and and, and make a way forward in society. Um, this is the stuff that life is made of, and this is the the homecoming that I think God's calling us to in Christ. Right. Ultimately, when we get to heaven, um, I'm not sure how uh, much it's going to look like the heaven that we've been trying to make for ourselves around here. You know, we think of gold in the streets. You, you look at church buildings, right? Hmm. And how homey are they? Uh, not as homey as they used to be. Right. Uh, you know, they tend to be more exalted in, in, um, in, in ways that I think sometimes kind of militate against this Advent narrative, which is, um, you know, the Savior coming, um, and I, you know, I forgot which line it was here, but um, uh, from the manger, right, is newborn mm-hmm. light. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is glory, is um, this child, uh, this man on the cross, uh, 
yeah, it's just not the way the world is looking for these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's one other verse I'd like to kind of just highlight was verse five. I think it's, it, it is so important for us to remember the purpose of Christ's birth. Um, the, the 21st century, uh, even sometimes, unfortunately, the 21st century Christian perspective is to forget about the cross and forget about the crown as part of the Christmas story. There, that has to be so beautifully intertwined, the, the, um, the shadow of the cross looming over the manger, as one, uh, one of the Kretzmans put it one time, I remember reading. Uh, probably OP. Oh he yeah, probably. Stuff, yeah. But that, that is so important to remember that this is not some sort of idyllic Christmas story that we, can, that we should just kind of go, oh, and then forget about the real purpose. You know, the real purpose, as summed up in verse 5, God the Father was his source, back to God he ran his course. Into hell his road went down. I don't want to sing about hell at Christmas. Come on, this is about a baby Jesus and Christmas lights. No, you know, this is, this is exactly the purpose for which Christ was sent. Yeah, and we have to remember that from the very beginning. Yeah, he's destined. And this is true for your child at home, right? This is true for all of us. You know, what are we destined for? Um, not just some glorious progression where we get better and better and then you know, uh, we're destined to um, suffer for, for the sake of, of those, you know, give our lives up. Yeah. Um, and that's a totally different thing. It's all, something only Christians, I think, really, really honor in a way that's, that's faithful to the world and to um, the glorious thing that God has in store for us at the end, right? I mean, other religions might say, um, you know, it's kind of like a, like a stoicism or, a, or even a Hindu type thing, right? Or Buddhist type thing, give yourself up. Um, but ultimately we understand that, uh, you know, he who abandons wife and children, and, or not wife and children, but uh, brothers and sisters and loses mm -hmm. house and mm -hmm. home and all these things, right. actually gets all of this back and much more, right? Home. God is calling us home yeah. um, to our true home, which is so much greater and broader and, and better than, than what we cling to sometimes. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. Well, this will be a great trip to this Advent. I uh, look forward to kicking it off with you this Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel and take a look at some of the other videos that we have, including the video of this hymn. You can sing along with it as you decorate your house for Christmas. <laughs> Be well. Have a good week. Mm -hmm.